Hello, my name is Fred Rutledge. I'm Vice President, Royal Canadian Legion Branch 25. Wishing you all a very happy Canada Day. Happy, happy Canada, Canada, Canada Day. Day. July 1st also marks the day we remember the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, lest we forget. Good morning, my name is Michael Barber, and I am the President of Branch 25 of the Royal Canadian Legion, representing the San Francisco Bay Area, and Vice Commander of the International U.S. Western Zone. I'm coming to you today from the former Mare Island Naval Base and Shipyard. At the top of the hill behind me was the location of the first Marconi wireless station on the American Pacific Coast, which was constructed in 1904. Native Newfoundlanders and Labradorians as well as fans of historic as Heritage Minutes will understand why we have chosen this location to host our second Commemoration Day service. Individuals from Newfoundland and Labrador are also familiar with Commemoration Day, or as it is more commonly known, Memorial Day, and the fact that July 1st is not just a day of celebration, but also a day of remembrance. In addition to the expected Canada Day celebrations, the 1st of July in Newfoundland and Labrador, we also remember the tragic events of 1916 and the Battle of Beaumont Hamill. As a branch of the Royal Canadian Legion outside of Canada, historically we have not held a service for Commemoration Day. Traditionally we have held Remembrance Day services, a service on U.S. Memorial Day. However, at this time last year, we were only three and a half months into the pandemic. Our branch had already cancelled our annual U.S. Memorial Day service and three monthly meetings. The annual Anzac Day service that we traditionally participate in with our Aussie and Kiwi colleagues had been cancelled. Our U.S. Naval Sea Cadet Corps, Arkansas Division's annual inspection, where we traditionally award the Royal Canadian Legion Cadet Medal of Excellence, had also been cancelled. But the Digital Moose Lounge and the Canadians in Orange County had asked us to provide some Canada Day programming. So the idea of a Commemoration Day virtual service was born. I wanted to begin today with some of this context because our service this year is a little different than our other virtual services we have hosted over the past year. In this service, we wanted to highlight reflections from some well-known Newfoundlanders and Labradorians of Commemoration or Memorial Day, as well as some of the talent from the province. We'll begin today's service with a raising of the flags by Comrade Fred Rutledge, the past president of Branch 25, followed by the singing of O Canada. One of the reasons I just mentioned the early days of the pandemic was because this version of O Canada, which many of you have probably already seen before, was created by the Newfoundland and Labrador English School District in April 2020, only a month into the pandemic. As you listen to the messages and view the unique nature of this version of our national anthem, I want you to think back to the past 15, 16 months and everything that we have endured and overcome. I am a parent. I am a teacher. I am a principal. I am a leader. We are, we are students. students. We are students. students. We are students. We are practicing physical distancing. And although we must stay apart, we can still be together. 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 It is critically important to stay virtually connected during these unprecedented times. By staying connected, we can be stronger than ever. We've decided to connect through singing. 
because music has the power to bring us together. We are proud Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. We are proud Canadians. Let's show our Canadian pride by singing O Canada together. safe Canada. We're in this together. Soyez là les uns pour les autres et on va passer à travers ensemble. Thank you Comrade Rutledge and the Newfoundland and Labrador English School District, particularly Robert Colburn who performed God Save the Queen in our original Commemoration Day service last year. As we begin to emerge from the restrictions of the past year and a bit, it is important to reflect on everything that we have been through. And some of the messages from the different personalities in the last video remind us just how resilient we have been. Next, I'd like to ask Her Honor, Judy May Foote, the Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador, for her words of welcome and reflection on this Memorial Day. She will be followed by the Honorable Steve Crocker, the Minister of Tourism, Culture, Arts and Recreation, representing the Government of Newfoundland and Labrador. Greetings from Government House in Newfoundland and Labrador. As Lieutenant Governor and as Honorary Colonel of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, it is my honor to share with you our history and why we remember and pay tribute to our veterans and those who pay the ultimate sacrifice. 801 members of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment were on the front lines of the Battle of the Somme in the First World War. 733 of them were killed or wounded on the first day of battle. That heavy loss and their sacrifice will never be forgotten. That is why July 1st in Newfoundland and Labrador begins as Memorial Day and the commemorative flower is the forget-me-not. It is a time of reflection and an opportunity to remember the brave soldiers who valiantly defended the values of peace and freedom. I also acknowledge the sacrifices made by their family members. The regiment's motto is better than the best. That was and remains true. We will always remember them. Good day, and thank you for the opportunity to bring greetings to you on this Memorial Day. Today, we commemorate our losses incurred on July the 1st, 1916, the opening day of the Battle of the Somme at Beaumont Hamill. Approximately 800 men of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment went forward that morning. Only about 110 survived, of whom only 68 were available for the roll call the following day. Describing the regiment's efforts, a divisional commander later remarked, it was a magnificent display of trained and disciplined valor, and that assault failed of success because dead men can advance no further. On this 105th anniversary, we commemorate an event that cuts so deeply into all aspects of Newfoundland society that it changed the course of this country forever. Freedom is not free, it comes at a great price, lest we forget. Thank you, Your Honor Foote and Minister Crocker. 
Next, I would like to introduce Gary Brown. In addition to being a member of Branch 56 in Pleasantville, on the banks of Kitty Vitty Lake in St. John's, Comrade Brown was one of three members of the Kent Memorial Foundation Committee, and I will allow him to introduce our next piece. Comrades and guests, my name is Gary Brown, and the commemorative song you are about to hear, namely Looking Back to See Ahead, came to fruition through the efforts of three Royal Canadian Legion members, the late Craig Power, Ian Walsh, and yours truly. In 2012, we wanted to create something significant for the centennial of World War I. Craig Power's great uncle, Lance Corporal Martin Kent of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, lost his life at the Battle of Goudicourt in 1916. And like many young soldiers of the World War I, his body was never recovered. This haunting commemorative song was written and composed by St. John's school teacher, Daryl Rideout. Daryl's song was based upon my book, Fallen Boy Soldiers of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, World War I. For this presentation, the song has been sung by the Atlantic Vocal Ensembles, Newfoundland and Labrador, under the direction of Jennifer Benyon Martinique. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
Thank you, Comrade Brown. Moving along, I'd like to introduce Danny O'Flaherty. While he was born in Ireland, in 2018, Danny released an album, It's a Long Way From St. John's, which chronicles the Blue Petits, a nickname given to the Newfoundland Regiment because of the unusual color of the uniforms of the first recruits due to the unavailability of woolen khakis on the island. I'll let Danny say a few words about his song. Long Way From St. John's was inspired by Lee O'Neill, member of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, who was injured in one of the last battles fought in the First World War. His sacrifice and the injuries he sustained inspired this tribute to all the Blue Putties and the Royal Newfoundland Regiment. <laughs> T. 
She's singing temporary song I'd like to thank Danny O'Flaherty for that introduction and for his song. In fact, Danny has sent us five copies of his CD, It's a Long Way from St. John's, which we will send to five random viewers of the live ceremony today. If you aren't one of the lucky winners of this gift, you can order the CD from the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Museum online gift store. All proceeds of the sales of these CDs go to support the museum. Next, I'd like to introduce the Holy Heart of Mary Chamber Choir and their version of Sing You Home that was recorded this past November. The song was originally written by the Ennis sisters, who are actually Holy Heart alumni, as a part of the 100th anniversary of Beaumont Hamill in 2016. The Holy Heart Chamber Choir are under the direction of Robert Colburn, and the choir actually won first place in the CBC's Canadian Music Class Challenge in the category of Best Auditioned Music Class for this particular piece. Thank you. 
Thank you, Robert Colburn, and the entire Holy Heart of Mary Chamber Choir. While this year is the 100th anniversary of the poppy as a symbol of remembrance, for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, we often think of the forget-me-not as our symbol of remembrance. The forget-me-not first gained popularity in the 1920s when the Great War Veterans Association of Newfoundland adopted the flower for its annual commemoration or Memorial Day fundraiser. In fact, in 2016, to mark the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Beaumont Hamill, Dominion Command of the Royal Canadian Legion gave Legionnaires in Newfoundland and Labrador special permission to wear forget-me-not on their uniforms. As a part of this year's service, our cadets will read the lyrics of legendary Newfoundland folk singers Bud Davidge's song, Little Blue Forget-Me-Not. This past year, we celebrated the 25th anniversary of our sponsorship of the U.S. Naval Sea Cadet Corps Arkansas Division, and we've been very lucky to have their involvement in our branch activities ever since. Better than the best from the beginning since 1812 with Isaac Brock. Long before the graves were red with poppies, they wore the blue forget-me-not. Graveyards full of heroes fallen and stones that bear no soldiers' names, whose souls to heaven long departed, their praises sung at Menon's Gate. Where the words of John McCree still echo, in Passchendaele where their blood ran deep, they had gunfire o'er the fields of Flanders. They died in droves around the town of Ypres. Forget me not, we flower of beauty. Your royal symbol proudly stands. Blue is the loyal men that wore them, far from their homes in Newfoundland. O oh, Hamel's grass, as sheep are grazing, where trenches overgrown now lie. In stillness round the tree of danger, in France's blue and cloudless sky. Where the caribou stands ever watchful, or Vimy where our young men fought, in memory of those valiant comrades who wore the blue forget-me-not. Now days on end, alone they slumber, in Hamel, Monchi, and Song, beneath the flowers and the small birds singing, rest with their blue forget-me-not. Forget-me-not, blue tiny blossom, grows wild where loyalty is wrought, undaunted by Atlantic fury, bred like the blue forget-me-not. Forget me not, blue tiny blossom, long may you grow on soldiers' graves, and with the scarlet of the poppy, remind us of the loyal and brave, lest we forget the price they paid. Thank you to our cadets, both for their reading today and for all the support they provide to our services year after year. Our branch would not be able to undertake our activities that we do without their involvement. Next, I'd like to call upon two Newfoundlanders who need no introduction. Many of you will know the first better as Jake Doyle from the CBC hit television series Republic of Doyle, or maybe as Coyote in season two of the Amazon Prime series Jack Ryan. The second you will recognize from the long running CBC series This Hour Has 22 Minutes along with many other endeavors, including a new book that is about to be released. In the CBC documentary, Trail of the Caribou, Alan Hocko and Mark Critch traced the journey of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment during the Great War, specifically through the eyes of their own relatives. We've invited them to speak today to talk about this experience. Hi, I'm Mark Critch. And I'm Alan Hocko. There's hardly a household in Newfoundland and Labrador that was untouched by World War I. Mark and I followed the trail of the caribou across Europe, and we were shocked to discover that our ancestors both signed up together, fought alongside each other, and ultimately died and were buried side by side. Today we remember them and all those who didn't come home. We also remember those who did, and oftentimes forged a different kind of battle on their own. Today and every day, we remember, lest we forget. Thank you, Alan Hocko and Mark Critch, for those words. As we begin to close our service today, I want to call upon Berkeley Lawrence, the past president of the Newfoundland and Labrador Provincial Command of the Royal Canadian Legion, for some comments. Followed by Hugh Donnan, the executive director of the Newfoundland Symphony Orchestra, who will introduce the symphony's version of our provincial anthem, The Ode to Newfoundland, 
which features Chris Andrews of Shani Ganuk, along with the Newfoundland Symphony Orchestra. Good morning, my name is Berkeley Lawrence. I'm the immediate past president of Newfoundland and Labrador Command of the Royal Canadian Legion. And more importantly, I'm the president of Branch 23 Carboneer in Newfoundland and Labrador. And it is here in Branch 23 in our memorial room where I'm standing today to make this small video about what Memorial Day means to me and why we should remember. I'm standing in our memorial room as I thought this was a fitting location to do the video. And I'm surrounded by about 250 pictures of veterans from our area. I'm going to move slowly around to the other side. We should remember Memorial Day is important to Newfoundlanders because of what happened on the 1st of July, 1916, when the Newfoundland Regiment fought in the Battle of Beaumont Hamill. And in this picture right here is the reason that Memorial Day is so important to me. This person in the middle of the picture is my grandfather, Private Stephen Lawrence, who fought in the Newfoundland Regiment in 1916. He fought at Beaumont Hamill on the 1st of July. He was wounded at Beaumont Hamill and went to a field hospital to recover. A couple of months later, in August of 1916, he rejoined his regiment and fought in the battle at Goodencore, and he was re-wounded again in the same place, uh, in his shoulder. He was repatriated to England to a hospital and consequently released from the military and sent back to Newfoundland. But he is the reason uh, for my military history and the reason I remember on Memorial Day. In the picture also is my father who fought in the Second World War with the Newfoundland Regiment and specifically with the 166 Field Artillery. Behind my dad is myself and I served for 33 years in the Royal Canadian Signal Corps. And behind me is my son who has been in the military now for over 18 years also in the Signal Corps. Behind my grandfather is my brother who served in the Canadian military, mostly in the Navy for 37 years. And behind him is my, his son, my nephew, who served for four or five years in the Navy and took his release. Uh, so that's the reason that I remember on Memorial Day, uh, 1st of July, it's very important to all, to myself and to all Newfoundlanders that we never forget the sacrifices that were made by the Newfoundland Regiment back in 1916. So I wish everybody at U.S. Branch Number 25, San Francisco, a, a nice Memorial Day service and all the best. Thank you. Hello. We at the Newfoundland Symphony Orchestra are delighted to be able to share with you our recording of the Ode to Newfoundland, recorded last year during the pandemic and featuring Newfoundland and Labrador's own traditional artist, Chris Andrews of Shanigannock, as our vocalist. Thank you to all of those who have given their time and their lives in service of our countries in peace and at war. We will remember them.
Thank you, Comrade Lawrence, Hugh Dunnan, the Newfoundland Symphony Orchestra, and Chris Andrews. This brings us to the end of today's service. I want to thank you for attending today. This year actually represents the 90th anniversary of the San Francisco branch of the Royal Canadian Legion. Without the contributions of our members, as well as the involvement in and attendance of our services by you in the general public, our branch would not be able to continue our active role in the remembrance of those who fought and died for our country. Finally, for those in attendance who may be unfamiliar with the background of Commemoration Day or Memorial Day and the Battle of Beaumont Hamill, we wanted to end with a five minute video from Legion Magazine's Military Moments series on the battle. The moment is narrated by Newfoundlander Gordon Pinson and was produced as part of the 100th anniversary of various Canadian milestones during the First World War. Thank you again for attending. London town, take me over there, drop me anywhere, Birmingham, Leeds, or Manchester, well I don't care, I should love to see my best girl, cuddling up the game we soon should be, Italy, Italy, I see, hurry me home to Blighty, Blighty is the place for me. July 1st, 1916, marked the first day of the Battle of the Somme, an offensive against Germany by British and French forces on both sides of France's Somme River during the First World War. The village of Beaumont Hamel was just behind German lines. The offensive there started at 6 a.m. with an hour-long artillery bombardment of German positions. At 7.20, 10 minutes before zero hour, 18,000 kilograms of explosives were detonated in a tunnel dug under the Hawthorne Ridge Redoubt, an important German stronghold west of the village. The explosion alerted the Germans to the attack and gave them time to man their defenses and arm their weapons. The Newfoundland Regiment and the rest of the 88th Brigade waited back in St. John's Road, a reserve trench with dugouts that protected them against German shells. The Newfoundlanders' mission was to go forward, but they walked into a complete disaster. At 8.45, the Newfoundland Regiment was ordered to move on the enemy, but the trenches were choked with dead and wounded from two earlier waves of attack. So the Newfoundlanders didn't use the trenches. They got up on top and simply walked over open ground. Some 780 men swarmed over the battlefield, weaving their way through the zigzag gaps in the British wire before reaching no man's land. They were the only ones moving on the battlefield and they were silhouetted on the horizon. Every German gun in the area was trained on them. Machine guns cut through the Newfoundlanders like cordwood. Many fell before reaching their own front line. A few made it to a clump of shell-blasted trees where the Danger Tree Memorial stands today. But most were struck by guns trained on the gaps in the wire. The Newfoundland Regiment was decimated in a matter of minutes.
The Royal Newfoundland Regiment has a storied past, but of all the stories, none is as captivating or tragic as its advance during the Battle of the Somme on July the 1st, 1916. One hundred years later, the event still resonates deeply with Newfoundlanders. Every July the 1st, while the rest of Canada celebrates the birth of a nation, Newfoundlanders mourn their losses in the Great War, and especially those at Beaumont Hamel.